Hey everyone, and welcome back to Sports Design School, where we teach you everything you need to know to create high quality sports designs in Adobe Photoshop. Now today, we're gonna to be talking about something that I think is super important in the world of sports graphic design. And it's that, it's the idea that you have to have something that's super complicated with lots of layers and lots of moving parts in order to make a design look good. And I'm here today to tell you that is just not true. As a matter of fact, I'd say it's the opposite. If you can do more with less, your designs are gonna look even better and even more remarkable. Now I've seen lots of people scrolling through Instagram on the sports design account and they like to add a lot of effects and textures and things like that and that's great. I'm not gonna roast any of those people but I think there's something to be said about keeping it simple and having nice clean design. And so today I'm gonna to be talking about this Derek Henry design that I put together. I'm just gonna walk you through step by step on how to recreate this look. Uh, it's great for beginners, but it's also, there's tons of awesome information that you can learn, even if you've been in design for quite a while now. So I highly recommend you tune in to this video. So let's get started. Now, before we dive in, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Um, I give this little pitch every single week, but we put out free PSDs for all of our designs that we do on this channel, including this one. You'll be able to download this PSD completely free. Check the link in the description. But those PSD links are only active for seven days, so make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of those free PSD downloads. And again, make sure you hit a like on this video to help support the channel and get this video in front of more eyeballs so we can keep creating awesome content. And so let's get started. I'm just going to start by dragging over this file into a new document. Now, one of the things you guys said in the comments before is that you wanna see us how we actually create the document. So I'm just gonna go over and hit file and then hit new. And for now, I'm just gonna hit 1920 by 1920 and my resolution is gonna be set to 300 pixels. Now it's important you have a high resolution on your designs because if it's too low, your fonts and everything will look pixelated. So we want high resolution, um, and then 19 by 20 by 19 by 20 works for this design. For color mode, we always wanna be in RGB when we're designing for um, screens, like phones, Instagram, laptops. That's the mode we're gonna stick in. So I'm just gonna hit create for now. And then I'm going to drag this design over so I can just walk you through the step-by-step -step process and just position it kind of like that. That's good enough. Perfect. Now I'm also going to include in the description down below a link to the Derek Henry cutout I used in this. Um, if you just want to use that separately, that's completely fine with me. I put together a video a couple weeks back on all of the different ways to cut out players in Photoshop. So if you want a video on how to do that, I'll put the link in the card right above in the top right corner right now, and you'll be able to check that out. Perfect. So I'm going to just click over here and click to my Derek Henry cutout and click and position him just how I had them. And you can see that's pretty simple. Now you'll notice my cutout and the actual result I have are a little bit different. And that's because I used two different things. I used this inner glow and I used a camera raw filter. And I'm gonna show you what I did for each of those so don't freak out. To use a camera raw, raw filter, we can go up and click on our layer and then hit filter and then go down to camera raw filter. And camera raw filter is a great way of adding some nice effects to our cutout to really make it pop more on our designs. So there are a couple of basic things I always like to do for any cutout. One is I like to increase the clarity. That's kind of like that HDR effect that you see on a lot of designs. It's just the clarity being increased to give it more kind of detail in the lines and make his tattoos on his arm pop a little bit more. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is actually just bring some of these black values down just a little bit. See, we want a, some nice contrast in that image and you can see, so look at like his armband right here. When I bring that down, it just gives it some nice contrast. And that looks pretty good. Um, 
And if you don't know, when you increase the or decrease the black values and increase the white values, or, so your black values are basically just the dark parts of your image, and your white values are the lightest, whitest parts of your image. So adjusting those tweaks those, which is why the dark parts just got darker when we decreased the blacks. So now you can see our cutout is basically the exact same. I think it's moved over just a little bit. And that's that. Now once you get the cutout out of the way, the rest of the design is pretty easy actually. Um, and I always talk about this and when I'm doing a design breakdown like this, but you always try to look at the different parts of the design so you understand how to recreate it. So for instance, in this we have our cutout with the shadow at the bottom, which we'll get to in a second. We have our Derek Henry text behind him, and then we have these little elements and the image in the background. So let's start by doing the shadow. Well, actually, let's start by adding a yellow background. I forgot that step. So we're going to add a solid color by clicking here and hitting solid color. Perfect. And we can hide this for now and then double click and just choose this shade of yellow that we're using. And there you have it, the exact same shade of yellow. Now I chose yellow for this particular design just because it pops really well with navy blue and light blue. So that's that. So now we have our shade of yellow. Let's add our shadows into this image. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to go and tap B on my keyboard to bring up the brush tool. And for now I'm just going to choose the soft round brush because that's just the standard brush that everyone, even you, will have on your Photoshop preselected. And I'm going to increase my brush size just a little bit to about 364, that looks fine. Now I'm going to go over here to this top left box and just pinch my brush in a little bit. And you can see that gives us a more flat brush to create some of those shadows. That's not what we want to do. We want just a horizontal pinch. Just like that. Now the other thing you're going to want to do before using this brush is you're going to want to make sure these settings up top are the same as mine. So our opacity we want 100%. Our flow, let's put it down to about 15%. And what that allows us to do is have more control over where our shadows are. For smoothing, zero, and then our angle we want zero. And make sure your brush color is just black, because that's what color most shadows are. We can decrease the opacity if we want to. I might actually make this brush a little bit bigger. And we're just gonna do kind of a subtle shadow right below Derrick Henry here. And again, we can turn down the fill value to adjust it. And now I'm going to create a new layer because we're going to want a different shadow for his feet right here. So I'm going to tap B to bring up the brush tool again, decrease my brush to 134, maybe a little bit bigger, 175. And now on this new layer, I can go over and just paint more detailed shadows under the feet. Just like that. And again, I can decrease the opacity. I can move these up and down as much as I want to. And I might move this big shadow down as well. You can even just hit a filter blur and then Gaussian blur on these if you want to make them a little less pronounced. And that looks pretty good to me. So again, we have our shadows. Now it's time to move into the next part of this design, which is the text. Now I just recently put out a video about my 10 favorite free fonts that you can get at um, a website called Google Fonts. And there are tons of great fonts in there. I'm going to use one of those in this video today. So I'm going to type and type in Henry. And for those of you wanting to know, this font is just called Oxenium. Uh, it was actually my favorite font from the video that I put out. Spoiler alert there. And I'm just going to click and select Henry. And I'm going to scale it up to match my design. Now for those of you wanting to know, I have it set to bold. There's tons of different options. And I also have my 
italics turned on to make it an italicized text. Just like that. I'm then going to go in and type in Derek and then decrease my text size. Maybe a little bit bigger. Just like that, that's about the same size. And then in order to get that text spacing like I have in my design, you're just going to go to this tool right here, click on this icon and just drag to the right. And that allows you to adjust the spacing between your letters. I'm then going to select this light blue color. And there you have it. We have our Derrick Henry text, just as we did. Now I might straighten this up a little bit. There we go. Now it's centered. Now a couple more things you'll notice in the design are these elements that we have added. And those are pretty easy to do. So for instance, these lines right here, I'm just going to hit T to bring up the text tool. And then I'm just going to do a bunch of slashes on my computer. Let's hope I didn't do question marks. Yep. Actually, I'm going to do just normal vertical lines on my computer. And let me bring that up so you can see it a little bit better. And notice since I have my text set to italics, it's going to look like a forward slash. I guess you could just do a normal forward slash and leave it as is, but I mean, hey, let's make our life difficult. And I'm going to just choose that navy blue color, decrease the size, and then again, click and drag to increase our spacing. And it's not exactly the same. We can play around with it a little bit. That looks close enough for me. So there we have our horizontal lines. Now you're never going to guess what we do for these X's up here. We just type X a bunch of times. So I'm just going to hit T to bring up my type tool and just type in X, 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 X. Turn off my italics this time and just place the X's where I want them. Just like that. This is some high level design going on. Just typing X's. That's fine. That works for me. And even there, you see the simplicity of this design? It looks good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. If you wanted to stop there, that's fine. I added this circle right here, which to do that, we're just going to click and go over to the ellipse tool. I'm going to click and drag and make a circle. And then I'm going to position it in roughly the same spot as our other circle. I guess scale it up just a little bit more. If you want to know how to transform things, you can just hit Command T or Control T on your keyboard and that'll bring up the transform tool and then you can click it and scale it however you want to. I'm going to set my fill for that shape to nothing, just right here. And then we're going to set our stroke to this light blue color that we selected earlier. And that's looking pretty good. So that's the vast majority of the design. Now we just have one step left, and that is this background image that we added. This is pretty easy to do. Um, I have this image right here from Derek Henry. I just pulled off of Google. I'll try to find it for you guys and then link it in the description if you want uh, to reuse this image. And I'm just going to click this and drag this into my image. Just like that. And we're going to drag it to the very bottom of our layers. Now we're going to want to do a couple of things. First, we're going to want to set our fill to 33 to decrease the appearance of our image. So you can see that compared to that, we're pretty close already. And another thing we're going to want to do is we don't want this image to go past where his feet are, just to give it a, like a floor look to it. 
So to do that, we're simply going to go into this image and click on this button right here that kind of looks like the Japanese flag, hitting add layer mask. And what that allows us to do is get rid of the parts of the image that we don't want without erasing or doing any of that kind of junky stuff. So I'm gonna go over to my gradient tool. I'm just gonna make sure I choose a gradient. Make sure it's just the black to transparent one. And when you're working the layer mask tool, basically just wherever this square right here is white is gonna show your image and wherever it's black, it's gonna get rid of. And then wherever it's gray, it's gonna be that weird in between transparency. So just make sure you use the black gradient tool. I'm just gonna click and drag up from the bottom, just like that. And there we go, Derrick Henry is limited to the bottom part of our image. And then the next thing I might do is just kind of browse through these blending modes to see if there's one that I like in particular. I kind of like the way hard light looks, so I'm just gonna use that. Again, blending modes are just how we can um, work with images to allow some colors to pass through and some things to not pass through to give it different effects when working in Photoshop. So I just have it set to hard light and 33%. And as you can see, that's, that's it. That's all we've done for this design. And hopefully you see that having a super simple design is actually pretty easy to do, but it also has great results for your designs. And so that's it guys. Thanks for watching. If you learned something new in this video, make sure you like this video. It seriously helps so much to get this into new people's computers so that they can get these awesome tutorials and awesome PSD templates. I'm going to put out a video very soon about just like the basics of Photoshop for those of you just getting started. I received some comments um, a couple weeks back saying, hey, I'm new to Photoshop, completely new. How do I dive in and get started? And so I'll put together a series of videos on that very soon. So if you're interested in that, make sure you leave a comment and say something like, that's awesome. Um, but other than that, guys, this has been Sports Design School, and I hope you have a great day.